Hello, my name is Eric Tyree, and I am the head of product here at Weijo. Hi, I'm Daniel Tibble. I'm director of data and engineering at Weijo. Hi, I'm Alvin Chan. I'm the head of product analytics at Weijo. Hi, I'm Yogita Chirekani. I am senior data analytics here at Weijo. Weijo EV Intelligence is a product for optimizing the uh, location of charge points for electric vehicles. So if you're in the public sector and you need tools to work out for infrastructure planning and for、uh, future planning of EV take up, you want to understand, what, you know, or trying to work out where the optimal places to to be putting EV charge points, especially and particularly, you know, and taking into account the new government mandates or something on the order of、uh, there needing to be an EV charge point every 60 miles. This is precisely the kind of tool for doing that because it looks at where EV charge points exist and where you should be placing them to get or to meet the demand for EV within the geography. On the private sector side, it's also applicable to either you're a private sector EV、uh, EV point provider, or for example, you're a retailer and you're trying to understand. Or create a business case for EV charge points、uh, on the premises of, of your own business. So I don't know, you're a, a major retailer and you're trying to understand well if I put EV charge points, roughly what kind of takeout would I be looking at? How many points should I be putting in? You can also start constructing the business case around you know, do I think about this as a pure revenue generation piece or do I want to start looking at this as a way of just increasing footfall? The opportunity for EV、um, intelligence is huge.、And、the first is the EU. So an entire continent has to adjust to the electrification of transport, which means everybody who's got a stakeholding in transportation, whether you're you know an infrastructure planner, you're a retailer, you run forecourts, you have to fundamentally rethink and replan how energy is distributed across the continent. The sheer scale with which people are going to have to move and the speed with which they're going to have to move, you know, really highlights the opportunity、uh, for this product in the market. The same is becoming true in the United States. California has passed legislation banning internal combustion engine sales in a similar time scale. And you think about it, California is by far the largest consumer of cars in the United States, and that legislation is being adopted by other states as we speak. You know, ten years is not long. That's a fundamental change to how、uh, energy infrastructure is is built and is thought of. So、uh, this is a product that is needed now, and its demand is only going to increase. And、um, and that increase is not just pure market driven; it's being driven by government mandates. So that demand is pretty much you know carved into stone. And you think about it; it's not you know it's not going to be just retailers thinking about it. I mean, if you talk to forecourt managers, so people are currently running you know gas stations is they're fundamentally rethinking these forecourts. So they're now thinking, okay. I'm going to have to think about having different types of charge points. So people who will pay a premium for a faster charge, people who would rather wait. But now they're also having to rethink how they're going to, you know, what are the services that a forecourt provides? You know, they're going to start looking like mini main streets where you can go in, you can do pharmacy, you can do banking, whatever. All these things that you're going to need to be able to do while you're waiting for your car to charge. This is a a paradigm shift, and this is a tool that's absolutely essential to being able to weather that process of shifting to the electrification of transportation. Yeah, so this is products built primarily on the Palantir Foundry platform. Now, the Foundry platforms allowed us to move our analytics and intelligence offerings、um, really fast and really quick. We're able to do analytics within that platform that would have taken weeks and months,、uh, literally in days. And what it's fantastic at is getting the data and the solutions and the insights and all the fantastic models that we're able to build with this huge data set of Weijo's into the hands of the users really, really quickly, so we can work. With our customers as partners to develop these solutions very specifically around their、uh, problems, and then we can roll it out at scale to multiple customers in the same market or even different verticals. One good thing about、um, Palantir's Foundry platform is that it has been divided into various little apps. So for your analytics space, you have a different app. For your coding space, there's a different app. So which means when your data comes in. Through the front door, there are apps to easily、um, ingest any data from any of the cloud platforms, be it AWS, be it Azure, or any other third-party applications. It's relatively easier to do the coding in simple PySpark or Java or SQL or Mesa language in code repositories. Once that's complete,、uh, it's even、um, easier to represent the data in the front end, which is called as a workshop application. So. 
specifically for AV intelligence. That's precisely what we have done. Our data has come in, uh, Vijo's data has come in from the front door. We were able to manipulate and transform the data from journey to the product. We were able to aggregate and present um, the most valuable insights on our front end workshop application. Just to add on to that, it was really great to see that the Palantir platform was able to handle um, data at scale. So, you know, with Weijo's data, we have tens of billions of journeys in a day, um, trillions of journeys in, in a year. So, you know, those kind of numbers, it was great to see that the Palantir platform, you know, particularly through the likes of the, the code repos and the data storage, were able to handle that volume of data. Alvin, it's been an iterative journey. So just tell us a little bit about what are the problems we started off solving and what were the problems we've evolved to be solving for our customers? You know, if I think back to the beginning, it was, you know, the, the brief was to take billions of journeys and to, to really make sense and create insight from that. There was definitely an EV lens on it, but then as we've, uh, you know, engaged with prospects, customers um, closely, we've started surfacing some of those deeper things that are interesting. So as an example, at the beginning, uh, you know, customers and uh, prospects are saying, you know, we, we'd be happy to just understand the penetration of EVs um, near our sites, near our retail sites and our stores um, as, a, as a proportion of traffic. But actually what we uh, did when we dug deeper and we talked to the customer in a bit more depth was they really were interested in uh, counts of vehicles um, and not, not just counts of uh, e electric vehicles and uh, internal combustion engine vehicles separately, but also some of the characteristics about them. So for example, how long do electric vehicles stay at these locations? Um, how far have they driven to get there? What times of the day, what days of the week do they tend to arrive at? All of these things actually have a really important influence on designing the right charging infrastructure and installing the right units for specific sites, specific locations. And that's something that we were really um, pleased to bring to the table. If you're looking at uh, people who are still very much early in the planning phase, they might be thinking about this and going, right, I've got 10 potential sites that I could uh, install electric vehicle chargers at. Which are the ones that will uh, generate the most revenue? Which ones are, are gonna be the most profitable? And that's driven by an understanding of the number of vehicles that go past, you know, your charging opportunities or the number of vehicles that stop there. Now, going one level deeper, people who have already made the decision that they would want to install EV chargers somewhere, you know, they would like to know what types of electric vehicle chargers would be appropriate. There's different levels of chargers, so the most popular being level two chargers and level three chargers. Now, deciding between them is really important because uh, level three chargers will be able to charge your vehicle from you know, 10% to 90% within about half an hour or 45 minutes or so, but they cost a lot more than level two chargers, which are slower, but they may be more appropriate in certain situations where, uh, you know, the, the vehicles and the users are not as time sensitive. One main challenge was the Foundry platform in itself to process this data. We literally sat down with one of our associates from Palantir. It was a joint initiative. We sat down and we decided, right, this is the sort of data that we are bringing in. What do we want our data architecture to be so that in Palantir's Foundry platform, everything is, a, 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 the ontology has to be represented using an object type. So what do we want to be our object, uh, object types? Because we are generating two different types of events, particularly for this product. So one is a parking event and the other one is a pass-through event. We would need to manipulate the data and split it into different stages. So if we are providing aggregates with respect to, let's say, parking events, by the day of the week, by the hour of the day, by the year of the month, and same thing for pass-throughs as well. We were able to organize the data structure in such a way that when the data comes into the front door as pure raw, um, in its raw form, we are then easily able to manipulate it, fit it into the right structure, and those object types are then being picked up and presented onto a workshop application. That was the first real challenge. 
the second one on top of that is we decided that what's what's the best thing that you can do when you're trying to provide insights to your customers they want to just remove the rubbish and just skim through the most uh, creamier part meaning let's take l3 charging as an example yes there are many retail uh, locations let's say for instance and they want to find out say for example in a drive through location give me uh, the number the count of vehicles that just drive through and just stop at my retail location let's say for 15 or 20 minutes for example in that case we'll be able to determine right why don't we band our dwell time distance and our inbound and outbound distance of a particular journey or of a particular device thereby derive the counts and split them in using these inbound distance band outbound distance band and dwell time distance band that way take the most creamier part meaning the counts of the devices which arrive from a far away location to a specific retail location spend there uh, spend about say 15 to 20 minutes of time there then that is my prime audience for l3 um, charging opportunity that means i can now decide as a retail location owner okay so on a daily basis if i get let's say about 10,000 vehicles which are just stopping at my retail location for about 20 to 30 minutes that could be a potential market for me and i have to then think about right how many charges do i install here would two be enough should i go for three and thereby we just just snowball it and then, then the discussions go forward so those were the two challenges that we solved along with palantir folks so Yagita, could with that in mind, can you show us how EV intelligence is being used to solve some of those problems uh, from a customer's perspective?